Hi, everybody. Josh Byerly here inside Mission Control Houston. I'm joined by my friend Camille Elaine. How are you doing, Camille? I'm great, thank you. You know, all this week we're talking about, and actually all this month, uh, more appropriately, we're talking about the anniversaries of Valentina Tereshkova, mm -hmm. who was the first female in space, and Sally Ride, who was the first American in space. One was 50 years ago, and one's 30 mm -hmm. years ago. Um, uh, who more appropriate to talk about it than you? You know, your background is uh, quite extensive when it comes to your education. You've got thank a you. Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from Howard University, a mm -hmm. Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering from Florida A&M University, mm -hmm. Master of Science in Aerospace <laughs> Engineering from University of Maryland, and a Doctorate in Educational Leadership from the University of Houston. So mm -hmm. you've had some, some schooling in science. Absolutely. Uh, which is pretty, but I think what's even cooler is she's actually a private pilot. Uh, which is amazing to me. But why don't you look at these these anniversaries? You know, what does it mean to you, and what are kind of your thoughts on it? Um, I think in the last 30 to 50 years, we've made significant strides, and and um, we've come a long way with the inclusion of women in right. human spaceflight. Um, to date, I think we've had about 57 women from diverse backgrounds, c both cultural, social, national, different nationalities, who yeah. have flown in space. Um, from an American perspective, since Dr. Sally Ride, we've had the first African-American woman, uh, Dr. Mae Jemison, in 1992, yeah. uh, who flew. Um, our own Senate Director, Dr. Elena Choa, mm -hmm. who's the first Hispanic uh, woman, American woman to fly in space in 1993, and then the first Asian American woman in Dr. Kalpana Chawla, who flew in 1997 for yeah. the first time. We lost her in Colombia. But um, these women have really blazed a trail and inspired countless um, women who have come behind them and and will for generations. From a global perspective, we've had a number of women who have flown in space from Japan, Canada, Europe, China, of course, Russia. Yeah. Um, and we've had an Iranian-American space tourist. So we've made so significant strides, um, including women in human space flight. You know, we try to always reach out to, to students and, and kids who are going into science. And whenever you take a look back at the school that you've gone through, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what made you pick the courses that you that you took, and when did you know? Um, I was really good in math and science in my early years of schooling, and um, I had a passion for airplanes, mm -hmm. for airplanes and aviation. Um, I also was very passionate about space from an early age. I grew up in the Caribbean, a small na island nation of Trinidad and mm -hmm. Tobago. And I remember at the age of six and seven, sitting on the trunk of my da dad's car many nights and just being awe-inspired by the vastness of space, not really knowing what that was all about. Um, but being really mechanical and analytical in my thinking, when I decided that I was gonna go to college, of course, I decided to study aeronautical engineering because of my passion for airplanes. Um, but then when I migrated to the States as a freshman and I'm dating myself, the Challenger accident happened and that just changed my life. Like in those moments, I decided this is what I wanted to do. So I switched from aeronautical engineering to aerospace engineering and you read my bio, so yeah. the rest is history. I um, spent 18 year career designing rockets and spacecraft systems, both yeah. for Department of Defense and NASA. So whenever you talk to, to boys and girls that are going into, you know, if they, if they, they kind of have a hankering for, for science, mm -hmm. Is that really the key? It's just for them to, to go with what interests them, what you know, what their passion is, rather than trying to say, okay, you know, the end of my career, I want to be here. I, is it more important to say, well, here's what I really like to do? And is that the key? Yes, it is the key. I I think you have to follow the things that you're passionate about. Um, specifically for girls though, encouraging them to go into science requires exposure, mm -hmm. right? And so having opportunities as a high schooler to go and work in a lab alongside a professional scientist or researcher or engineer and getting that exposure and those opportunities to see what the real world of science and engineering is like has been shown to really sustain the interest of females um, continuing their careers in those areas. So you work on the program science office. I do. You know, sort of the uh, the brain trust of all the science we've got going on on board uh, the orbiting laboratory. Whenever you take a look at it, you know, you were talking about all the different, uh, you know, legendary females that we've had. Mm -hmm. One of them just walked back in the room, Anna Fisher's over there is our oh, camp wow. count today. Uh, she's part of the original group of astronauts, mm -hmm. but then we've had 
dozens of astronauts that have flown up to the space station, females and males, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, Peggy Whitson was uh, a commander of the mm -hmm. space station back on expedition. First woman commander. Uh, yeah. It, whenever you take a look at the space station itself, and a lot of these PIs, the principal investigators, are, are, are females, mm -hmm. too, very diverse. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, whenever you look at the experiments, what what do you think is probably the most promising thing that, w that, that the space station offers uh, for scientists and researchers and, and all the things that are going on and what they're working on. I think it's the amazing discoveries and breakthroughs that we have had and continue to have on the space station. Yeah. You know, all the biological, chemical, and physical processes that um, are po a function of our terrestrial in in environment is a function of the gravitational force, right? Our ecosystem functions because of that gravitational right. force. And so when you take that variable out of the equation, then th amazing things happen to those same processes, both in biology, chemistry, and physics. And so the space station really serves as a platform for us to do the investigation in those areas and, r and see what those changes are yeah. and, and have those discoveries and breakthroughs that, you know, we didn't know um, really could happen yeah. or exist. And a perfect perfect example of that is microbial vir virulence. You know, when we flew the salmonella bacteria and as a result of um, the microgravity environment, it became more virulent or the disease causing potency increased. And so the researchers also were able to identify the genetic pathway that caused, mm -hmm. caused that virulence. And so they, as a result, potentially could develop vaccines for those bacteria causing diseases that will have an impact of our, on our life here on Earth. Um, another one is um, after 40 or 50 years of human space flight, we recently discovered um, the vision de degradation nice, of yeah. astronauts. Uh, astronauts and so just recently we started that investigation called ocular health examining um, how that vision degrades during long duration space flights and so all these investigations um, in addition to the countermeasures that researchers develop as a result um, will have significant impacts and benefits to improving the quality of our life here on earth so last question is kind of a big one. <laughs> Out of all the things we've done on the space station, you know, what is your favorite experiment? You may have to explain what it is, but what is, what's your favorite experiment? I have two. Okay, <laughs> I'll give you two. The first is AMS, the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, okay. which is the largest particle physics detector in space. And up to date, it's been up there for almost two years, and yeah. it's gotten over 16 billion hits of yeah. cosmic rays. There it is. Um, and so that instrument and the inf the data we get from that instrument could answer the question of what is the origins of of our universe and from a physical and spiritual perspective i think human beings are curious about that how did we evolve um and so i think the the, pr the results from that experiment and that investigation is really, really promising. The second one is um, Sally Ride Earth Cam, yeah. uh, developed by Dr. Sally Ride, and it's one of the longest running investigations. It first started back in Expedition 2. Yeah. And what she um, facilitated was the opportunity for middle school students to be able to program the Earth Cam camera that's on board the space station to take images of various geological features of our Earth and use that in their studies of science, of math, of pre-engineering, geography, social si studies, and history. And so it's and it's one of our global education programs. So we've been able to reach countless millions of students around the world just with that investigation. So that's really one of my favorites. Well, even if Sally Rye would have never been the first American female in space, that is, uh, that, that is quite a legacy yes. uh, to leave to Absolutely. students. Absolutely. And, and they touch it, you know, all the time. Absolutely. So I think that's probably one of my favorite ones, too. Yeah. So. Thanks for joining us, Camille. Always, Thank uh, you. always good, always good to talk Thanks to you. So. Camille, Elaine, um, if you would like to learn more about uh, the office that Camille works in, which is the Program Science Office, and all the experiments that they help run on board the International Space Station, just log on to the NASA website at www.nasa.gov/station. Take a look at the left-hand side of the page under Research and Technology, and you can take a look at all the different experiments that the crews are working on every day. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.